Thank you. Everybody hear me okay? Cool. All right. Thank you guys for having me out. Um, say thank you to these guys because, man, they do a ton of work. Um, <laughs> ton of work. To make sure you guys get, get some good content and uh, get some good presentations. So that's awesome. Um, excited to talk with you guys about um, CodePen and some of the behind the scenes stuff that we, we did, some things that uh, you may not have known about CodePen, and just the process that we went through to, to redesign CodePen. Um, I'm Jeremy, I'm the creative director at Sparkbox in Dayton, right down the road here. Um, we're a web design and development shop. Uh, there's about 25 people, that I think, that work for, for us. Um, a little bit about me, this is my family being goofy, like you can often find us doing. Uh, my wife and two boys. Uh, it's kind of interesting, my, my oldest boy in the lower left there came home from school. At the end of last year was talking about how he was learning some coding stuff and using a, a site called CodePen. And I'm like, what? No way, we, we designed that. He totally didn't, didn't believe me. Then I, th then I finally convinced him, and now he thinks I like designed all of the web, you know, everything. <laughs> but uh, a typical designer, I, I like to just take pictures of found typography and anything I find down this, walking down the street or in an antique shop or anything like that. Um, my family's gotten used to it now, but they were kind of annoyed at the beginning. But now my wife basically has a new hobby of taking pictures of me, taking pictures of <laughs> typography, and then making fun of me on Facebook or whatever. So uh, quick disclaimer time. If you came here to get some tips on how to do a good speaking engagement, uh, you're probably going to be a little disappointed. Um, but I do have some really good news. If I bomb this whole thing, there is like an awesome demo at the end of this presentation by Chris Coyer. That's like, it, it is actually top secret. So uh, he, he said, make sure everybody knows. Only a handful of people have seen this, so be looking out for that. So don't leave in the middle or anything like that. Um, cool, so here's just a run through of some topics I'll cover. Um, a lot of process stuff in here. We'll talk a little bit about design. We'll talk about, uh, there, there's kind of some project management stuff sprinkled in. There's so much content that we have, it's hard to kind of narrow it down and figure out you know, what to exactly uh, show um, some takeaways that we had, some things we learned. I'll be real honest and open about things that didn't work very well. Uh, again, the super awesome new feature demo, and uh, we'll have time hopefully for questions at the end. So, uh, how many here use CodePen? Show of hands. Cool. Um, I don't want to assume that everybody knows what CodePen is. So, CodePen is a web application, uh, CodePen.io that uh, allows you to basically jump in and start writing HTML and CSS and JavaScript right away without having to set up your environment. It renders right away in the browser. Um, it's a super cool thing. Uh, a lot of people use it for just quick experiments. Some people use it for like a portfolio. Um, I mainly use it for, for experimenting and also gathering inspiration. Um, there's a few different types of content on CodePen. So this is a pen that I'm showing here. Uh, you can create a pen. There it is rendered in the browser. You can also write blog posts. Um, there are some posts there. And you can also uh, make a collection, which is a collection of pens, so a group of pens. So if I'm searching for something, if I want to uh, make a collection of uh, mobile navigation, I can do that if I'm looking for some different techniques. It's a really cool thing. Um, I think that's it on CodePen. Hopefully everybody's kind of familiar now. A little bit of background on how this project started. Um, so Chris Coyer is the founder of CodePen. Um, he's of CSS Tricks fame, and um, uh, you know he travels all around and speaks, and, and we do a lot of speaking too. So we started to get to know him a little bit, just at conferences and having dinner with him and stuff. And then we also hired um, Katie Kovalson, who I believe spoke here last year on performance. Um, and she had been doing some, some work for Chris previously, uh, just some, some freelance stuff, um, you know, providing some, some design assets and things. So um, because of that, Chris came to us and said, hey, do you guys want to redesign the site? Um, initially, it was kind of more of a, do you guys want to reskin the site kind of thing, kind of conversation? And then um, he came down for a day and we started talking and, and he's like, you know, anything you guys want to suggest, dig into it and, and we can figure out, figure out something uh, as far as you know, payment and things go like that. 
And so we, we spent a few days walking through it um, and saw a few opportunities. Um, you know, this was a chance for us to work on a project that we really loved and used. And I was talking with somebody earlier. That's like the coolest feeling to work on something that, you're, that you love, that you use. Uh, even if it's, you know, for a, for a product that you have or, or, or whatever, that's the, the sweet spot for us, you know, for me. And uh, probably for everybody, I would imagine. Uh, so that was really cool. Um, it was an opportunity for us to experiment with our design process. So uh, this is kind of unique in that, you know, this was a, a design effort for us where most of the projects we do are design and development, front-end development and any back-end development that needed done. So, but this was a chance we saw for us to kind of push ourselves a little bit and do some new things that we hadn't done before uh, in our process. <clears throat> and then it was also a chance we thought we could do another uh, round of designing in the open. So we did this with our own website a couple years prior where we created another um, subdomain and just kind of recorded our, our progress uh, and posted you know, a lot of different artifacts and things from our, from our project and redesigning our own site. So we thought, oh, that could be really cool to do this uh, with CodePen too. And then so we, we talked with Chris. We offered a kind of a fixed discounted rate. There was kind of a, a big upside uh, for us, uh, which, and this was a big deal for us too because we usually work hourly, and it's kind of a debate in our shop too. Discussion for another time probably. But um, so we offered a, a fixed discounted rate and just, uh, you know, he was, Chris was totally open to, you know, whatever we wanted to do with the site and put together some recommendations and go from there. So uh, this is the site, and I think this will be tweeted out by the, by the group here. Um, you can go to this site, and a lot of this stuff, all of these artifacts from the project are here. You can see we've broken them out by date, so you can kind of navigate by date or month up there. Uh, and just kind of goes through the whole project, explains what we did. Uh, there's links out to some of the prototypes we did in Envision. Some of the comps, you can kind of get in there and view all of that stuff if you like. We'll, we'll show some of those tonight. But. Um, and this is the team. So this was kind of a unique uh, team, I guess, for an app this big. So there was only six, six of us. Uh, at the time, CodePen uh, was Chris and Alex and Tim. Um, and they, both of those guys were co-founders also, which I didn't know. Uh, and um, at the time, it was just those three. They've since hired a bunch of people. Um, and they have a, uh, a, a bigger team. And they're all distributed. Uh, and actually, um, you know, Katie and I were really the only two people that were in the same location. Uh, Melissa here in the upper left, Melissa Taylor, was our project manager. And then there, that's Katie, who I mentioned in the middle. She's a designer. And there was me, a designer. And then uh, Chris did all the front-end code, uh, which is also really unique for the clients to be doing the front-end code. So it was kind of... Really interesting there. Um, and the other two guys did a lot of, did a lot of the back end type coding. Um, okay. So this is kind of hard to see, but uh, this is basically what the site looked like uh, when we started. So there were some, you know, some obvious things we wanted to do with some of the design. We felt like some of the, uh, oh, thank you. Some of the um, uh, typography could use some work, some hi the hierarchy. Um, you know, some of the ratios of, of the pens and things like that. Um, but as we dug into it more and more, we started to see like how deep this thing really was. There's so many like modals and settings and menus and, you know, we were users of the app, but we still didn't, didn't have a grasp on how, how big it was. Um, so that's what we were trying to get our head around. But the big question for this redesign was, you know, where in the world do we start? on this because um, it was, it was uh, just a huge app and, and because we were um, you know, creating a new design for an existing app with a lot of users, it was like this question you know, just kept coming up. So, um, so my hope today is that you can, you can answer some of these, like this question on some of your projects. So I'm gonna kind of talk about like how we decided where to start and how some of the things that we did helped us uh, to figure that out. Um, so this, this talk hopefully will apply to designers, developers, project managers, if you're a client. Uh, hopefully you can take, take uh, at least one thing away from this. Um, so we knew a few things after we started digging in. You know, we knew that we needed to spend more time learning. 
ab about the project itself and about the product and digging into it. Um, you know, we needed more information about who uses CodePen. Um, you know, the CodePen team gave us a lot of information and, um, you know, we were like, okay, let's, let's dig into those. And that was a little bit concerning because it was like, there's a lot of different audiences, a lot of different types of users. And so, you know, how do we please all of these users um, was certainly a concern. And then we needed more information to help us determine where to start. Like I said, we were very needy on this slide. Um, so, um, so we, st we decided, hey, we need to spend some time doing research. And, um, you know, we, we had to kind of resist the urge to jump in and start doing sketches and designing and, and picking out typography and colors because um, we really felt like we needed to do more research than we usually do on, on projects. So, um, so we embarked on this uh, journey into, into research that we hadn't really done before, more than we've really done before. Um, and so this was one of the areas where we, we really, really thought we could push ourselves. Um, and Chris was all about it. He was all into it. Um, so um, before I get into that, there's a couple reasons. Like, you know, we had discussions about what are we going to do. Um, looking back, here are some reasons why, why do this type of research. And I'll, I'll kind of detail out the types of research we did, too. But talking to users is super valuable. I mean, if there's one thing you take away from this talk, it's talk to users before you start a redesign. It sounds really obvious, but um, you know, your client can tell you a lot of things and, and you know, act like they know a lot of things. But there's a lot of assumptions you can make, too. Um, sometimes it's easy to talk to users. Sometimes it's harder to talk to users. Uh, there's been a couple situations I've been in where clients don't want us to talk to users. Um, but you know, it's kind of like talking them through that it's going to be a better product if, if we do. Um, so talk to users. Um, research helps us. In this case, it really helped us to understand the project better. Uh, we kind of came in thinking we would kind of know the project and know what to do. Um, but that wasn't really the case. Um, and then information gathered helps to answer that question, where do we start? And I should say, too, it helps the, the stakeholders, the, the CodePen team, it helped them, too, understand their project better and what, what users wanted. Um, and then, um, you know, you often like talk to users and, and surprising things come up. So there was a couple of those areas, uh, one in particular that I'll, I'll talk about here in a little bit. All right, so here's the types of research we did. Um, we did a user survey. And there's a lot of bullet points in here, sorry. But it's kind of like, how do I distill this down into, into uh, uh, chunks here? Uh, there's, we did a user survey, we did user interviews, and we did um, some stakeholder interviews. So and we decided on those three things. Um, basically, uh, it was kind of cool that Katie and Melissa uh, were relatively new hires to Sparkbox at the time. And so they kind of brought in their past experiences. And uh, they had done some of these things. And I hadn't dove into a lot of this stuff. I, I usually came at research from more of a branding perspective. And certainly, we, we did some of that. But this was about talking to users and just like, how do you do that? How do you, how do you get into? Uh, talking to users, how do you record that information? Uh, so it was cool to kind of see the team come together and, and decide to do this and kind of take a course of action here. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the user survey. Um, so it was kind of nice. We had the luxury of, of um, CodePen just sending out a tweet saying, hey, we got a survey up on Wufu. Can you go take it? And you know, it's kind of, it's kind of cool because like the audience for this project is our peers, so they care about stuff that we care about. Um, so that was a bit of a luxury. You know, if you're, if you're doing a user survey, you know, it might be a little bit more of a challenge to get people to participate. You might have to um, you know, offer some incentive, a discount code, or something for people to participate. But um, we got 461 people to respond. Um, and it was kind of cool. So we, so we asked these types of questions. You know, uh, this, so this was a multiple choice kind of thing, or they could answer other. Um, so we got all kinds of stats compiled from this. Um, I think there were actually about seven or eight questions, I believe. Um, just asking about like how you use CodePen, trying to get a finger on the, the audience, how they use social features, like was it hard to use CodePen when you first signed up, when you first started using it? Um, so got a lot of good data. The learning curve thing was a big concern for, the, uh, for Chris and his team. Um, that was kind of like the next thing on their list, or something that they wanted to hit right away, was maybe creating a tour for people who uh, just signed up. 
Um, so they were pr pretty concerned about that. So that was something we were curious about getting feedback on. Um, some things we learned from that, um, again, there's lots of different types of audiences and ways they use Copen. Um, and we found that overwhelmingly the, the learning curve was pretty um, very easy. Everybody thought it was easy to get up and get going. Um, I think that concern from the CodePen team came from like there's so many different settings and different things that how do we get everybody to know about them? But you know when you go in the app, you can just like click create a pen and just start start coding. So I think you know people said, oh, that's super easy to do. Um, so there was a little bit of, maybe of a disconnect there, but um, and then it was about a 50/50 split on the social aspect. Um, so a lot of people like really didn't care about the social side of things, about following people, about liking or commenting on pens or posts. Uh, and then the other 50%, I mean, they were kind of like black and white. People like loved it. Some people loved it. Uh, and so social is kind of like a little bit of a differentiator for, for code pen. Um, so that was interesting to see as well. Uh, for the user interviews, we did nine user interviews uh, and two in-person interviews. And so this, that number isn't really like a magic number, but it was kind of like uh, this gave us uh, people that were handpicked from CodePen and a wide range of a couple people from each kind of like audience type. So professors, students, uh, designers, developers, and I think we talked to a couple people overseas. So it was, it was, we felt like it was a good range of people to talk to. For the online interviews, um, you know, we usually had two people in the room. We were usually on a, like a Google Hangout. Uh, one person was asking questions. One person was taking notes. Uh, sometimes we had three people in there. Tried to keep it to a half hour, and um, uh, we recorded all the audio so that somebody wasn't there or, or the CodePen team wanted to listen to it, they could. Um, so we were very meticulous about, about taking notes and documenting everything. We use Google Docs for, to create a template for stakeholder interview questions. You can get to all these files that I'm showing uh, out on that the website that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so we would just duplicate this, you know, while we're on the phone and, and type away. Um, the cool thing about this is, you know, we, we asked more open-ended questions to try to get people to talk about their experience with CodePen and how they use it. So that way we could follow up you know, with questions and kind of probe into things that we wanted to learn a little bit more about. So there were probably maybe 30 questions or so, if I remember right. Um, so sometimes you know, we wouldn't get to some questions if we went down a path and we wanted to explore something more. Um, but everybody was gracious and awesome and really help out. I was really excited about being part of uh, you know, the evolution of CodePen. And that, so I've got a little audio from that. This is Katie, and she's talking to a guy from uh, England, I think. So would you say that you use CodePen more um, primarily just for teaching, or do you like create pens for fun um, and that sort of thing as well? Uh, I use it probably more for, um, I, use it, I use it loads for kind of creating my own little pens and demos and stuff to kind mm -hmm. of, uh, yeah, as you say, a little bit of fun or maybe try something new out. Or as I say, sometimes even starting off the design stage, I tend to prototype in it quite a bit for client work. Um, but then I'll use it a lot in the classroom. It's a very quick way of sort of going, you know, let's, let's dive straight into the code. Let's not worry about necessarily setting up the documents to link to each other because we've done that a million times before. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, yeah, probably 60-40, probably 60 percent my own stuff. 40% kind of in the classroom um, during kind of times when I'm actually teaching. When I'm not teaching, it's kind of totally me trying things out. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty common, you know, like a, a user using CodePen in several different ways. You know, you may be teaching a class or you might be just exploring or you might be um, posting a pen for the public to see and wants, you know, that to kind of be his showpiece. So. Um, you know, we, that was a common theme throughout these. Um, we also did um, some on-site interviews. That guy looks familiar. That's Kevin Mack. Um, we barged into his office. That's Katie there. And um, this was a chance for us to kind of just go into other people's environment and watch them use CodePen. Um, some, so some really cool uh, things kind of emerged. Uh, we took a lot of photos, and I think we took some video, too. 
Um, saw some interesting like educations where maybe some menus were hidden by displays or like the editor, the old editor had a, a lot of like view uh, toggle and, and um, menus in the corner, in the bottom. Uh, so we saw some like instances where people missed those things. Uh, so it was really helpful to just kind of like see uh, people use it and get around and navigate on the site. Um, so we did two of those, which was really cool. We'd never done anything like that before. Kind of wish we had done a few more of those, actually. Um, some common things we heard throughout the research phase that we did. This was probably the biggest one. Like, I can't find where, like, I have to go into my profile, then I have to drill into, like, pens to find what I'm working on. Um, so this was really common, and this was like common, like we have a lot of like power users at, Co at um, Sparkbox, um, and they're like, they're, you know, they're always frustrated about it, so we're like, okay, we get it, we get it, we want to see like what other users are saying too. Um, but anyways, uh, so that was a big deal. Um, we heard people say like they wanted to see it be more of a social network. Um, overall, like this was kind of the sentiment that we found like, People were saying, we love CodePen, CodePen is awesome, basically don't screw it up. You know, it's kind of like the thing. So we're like, okay, all right, we'll try to, we'll try to not screw it up for you. Uh, and then finally, in the research phase, we did stakeholder interviews uh, where we sat down with each of the uh, CodePen guys and uh, interviewed them uh, separately. Um, and these are great because, um, actually, I think I have a slide here, yeah. So, you know, you can get separate, in, separate uh, input from, from the stakeholders. You know, this is most useful, I think, when you, you know, have a team of like nine or 10 stakeholders on a project from your, from your client, and you're trying to figure out like, are they all on the same page? Do they all have the same vision for the project? Um, you know, uh, helps you to kind of see how that alignment is working. And really the goal of those is help, kind of help you to know like how does how is this project going to be successful so that's a question we ask in there you know like how what's what's this look like what is what makes a successful project for you um, and making sure you record that and all of this is going to be presented back to the stakeholders which is is, is fun too so you know that for these you know the code pen was pretty aligned um, you know which is understandable um, Chris was you know again all about a new home page a fresh look um, Tim was talking about, you know, like, I just want a pattern library. And he was all about the job listings, too, which was funny because that's kind of like they, they generate a lot of revenue through the job listings. So he's like, how do we play that up? How do we make that easier? And then Alex uh, talked a lot about the social side of things. So that was kind of interesting to hear how each of them had a little bit of different slant on, on the goals of the project. Um, but for the most part, they were all kind of just ready to, to you know, evolve the product and get something new going. So, um, yeah, so I think I just talked about most of these. Um, everybody was excited. The social aspect is important. Um, we didn't end up actually doing a ton with the social side of things. I think the design and some of the UX stuff we did improved some of that. But as far as functionality, it remained pretty much the same. Onboarding, again, like, like I said, they were all about onboarding and, and creating a tour for people and instructing people. Um, and then, you know, rethinking the home page as well. Uh, I think that, you know, they were afraid that people weren't aware of a lot of the features of CodePen. So even like pro features, um, where people like, do they know what benefits they're getting with a pro account? Um, so those were kind of the themes. And then, so once we went through all that research, we um, kind of gathered everything together and figured out how to present it. Uh, in a kickoff meeting. And this was another area that we um, wanted to try out too. Uh, so this was really, I think, the first time we had like a full day kickoff meeting. Everybody else do like big project kickoff meetings in here? Raise your hand if you do. Okay, a few people. Yeah, so I, this was kind of new to me. Uh, a couple other people, I guess Katie had done them at um, Happy Cog where she worked previous. Um, but it was really cool to, to kind of have, so Chris came down and we got the other two guys on on Hangouts, on a Hangout, and uh, uh, kind of just spend a day talking about the research. So one tip, if you do this type of research, you know, like make sure you build into the budget time to digest all of that information um, and audio and all that stuff. Uh, it took a lot of time to just get around our head around that stuff and also to figure out what made sense to present back to the team and what would be useful. 
Um, so we created this um, bunch of documents that kind of, which you can get to on the site as well, uh, with some exercises as well for the day. Uh, we did some design exercises, some content exercises. Um, we used a site called goodkickoffmeetings.com, uh, which is, I think, by, uh, put up there by Kevin Hoffman, where it gives a lot of uh, suggestions for different types of exercises you can do with your client uh, on a kickoff, in a kickoff meeting. Uh, so we grabbed some stuff from there. Um, this was an exercise where we were trying to figure out, you know, we listed a bunch of functionality and that, that may, we maybe didn't have on the site or, or design. And we, um, you know, we had, say, put, you know, a score from one to five if that's important to you. If it's important to you, put a five and arrange, you know, if it's not important, it's a one. So then that was a way for us to gauge, like everybody in the room did it, we did it too. Um, and then we tallied up all the scores and the way to gauge, okay, this, is, this one's the winner, this one's lower on the priority list. Um, so we did a few of those types of exercises which were really helpful. Um, we did some sketching. So this is some homepage sketches. Um, and so we, we spent probably 20 minutes sketching some things. I think we did a, a, like some individual sketching and then we paired up and did some sketching. And then one of the coolest things about this is um, just hearing the client talk about the sketch that they put together. You can kind of gather a lot of information for how they talk about what should be done. It was interesting, some of those themes like Alex, Alex's uh, sketch, which I think is this middle one here, um, was kind of like a timeline of people you follow and everything was in chronological order. Uh, pens and posts and things would just kind of line up in an activity stream. Um, so it was really cool, like some, some, um, some of the sketches really pushed the boundaries, which was awesome. Um, so we got some really good conversation going. So back to the question where to start, after the kickoff meeting or during the kickoff meeting, we started to talk about this and thought, you know, um, we could start to break this up into some phases. We, we wanted to, you know, keep things relatively moving and we don't want to, we can't address all of this stuff. We have to do, do an effort and then, and then launch some things, uh, which is cool about the CodePen team. They, they move really fast. They're all about launching stuff. They'll throw stuff out there constantly. Um, makes my designer heart a little bit nervous sometimes. Um, but, uh, so that was cool. But, um, so for the first phase, we said, okay, we're gonna address some of the, the obvious design uh, needs and wants there. Uh, and actually start thinking about a post page and, and the editor uh, itself, cleaning those things up, basically. Um, phase two, so we moved phase two down, um, we moved onboarding down to phase two, so that was basically based on the research and some of the discussion we had where onboarding maybe isn't as critical as they, they thought it was, so that was interesting. Uh, they wanted to redo, redesign the whole payments, the way you buy a pro account and make payments. Uh, which hasn't launched yet. Onboarding has actually launched. Anybody signed up for a, an account lately? You'll get a little tour of the editor. It's kind of cool. Um, but they cranked that out pretty quick. Um, and then phase three like, was kind of the catch-all for everything else we wanted to do. Um, so from that point, once we were through that, we felt like, okay, well, now we can start to think about phase one and some of the design things that we wanted to, to accomplish. Um, you know, we used a variety of tools here. Um, Photoshop and Sketch were the, were the main layout tools we did, uh, Illustrator for, for uh, iconography and things like that. So um, just kind of a, pretty much used everything, um, which is kind of cool. Um, so we, we said, okay, Katie is gonna start doing some visual exploration, explorations with an element collage, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then I started looking at some more like architecture type things and um, how do we, how can we organize this content in a little bit more um, engaging way and an easy way to, to get to? Uh, so along with that came some layout, some prototyping. So this is the first, really the first document we generated in even the sort of the design phase. You probably can't read all of this, but basically the idea is just for me to get my head around the content, I started grouping their content into, into buckets, so to speak. So this one is browsing and interacting. So we got pens and collections and posts and the search functionality. Creating, you know, you can create a pen, create a post, create collection. Uh, there's all this stuff that was like attached to your profile. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in there that we 
didn't even realize. So navigating through your profile, all of your pens, all of your posts and collections, who's following you, your activity, um, activity page where you can see who's liking and who's commenting and all that stuff. And then, you know, there was a bucket for like all the CodePen related stuff like meetups and blog and um, podcasts and stats and things like that. So, and then here's jobs up here. Like we had no idea what to do with jobs. We're like, I don't know where this fits. Um, so we just kind of like punted on that one, I guess. Um, and then uh, from there, we started thinking about like how, if you remember back to the previous uh, screenshot, what, what CodePen used to be, there was no navigation at all. It was basically a logo and a create a pin button, right? So we started to think about like, what if we designed, um, what if we had a navigation that was, you had pages for each of the content types, so pins and collections and posts. So this started like, we started talking and doing sketches, and this was kind of the result of that, starting to think about like how that navigation would work. And then also having like a secondary treatment for this navigation that was all kind of the code pen stuff, like we put jobs up here first because that, that was important to them. And then a little like, we call this a little priority plus menu. Actually, I think I, this is a video here, so you can see um, to figure out like, you know, as things respond and you know, the browser gets smaller, um, things get put into that little plus menu. Um, so here we're laying out like picked collections, which are like handpicked by the CodePen team, kind of like a featured sort of thing. You can see in the sidebar, there's a latest work. If you're logged in, you start to get the latest work uh, listing of your content. And then this drills into um, pens, a pens page. And you can filter by following and picked and highlighted and stuff like that. Originally, this, this idea started as, you can see like all the different types of content here. So this was, the idea was that this would be a timeline stream of people you follow to start out with. And so that's, that idea is still being tossed around. There's still talk around that. Didn't get it implemented or anything in the first, first round. But um, so we did this all in Envision, this prototype, uh, where you can make some hotspots and just link to different pages. Uh, and we showed, showed that to them, um, I think using the live share in Envision, which was super handy. Um, this was the ele first element collage we came up with. Uh, Katie did this. And element collage is a term that Dan Mall uh, uses. Basically, it's, it's, it's not a style guide. It's, all, it's, it's not a page on the website. But we're just picking and choosing and grabbing modules and elements that are uh, repeated and used a lot on the site. Um, so you can see here that um, we've also, you know, we've used like a pen module here. Um, we're starting to think about colors. We came up with the idea of like, Blue is associated with a pen, green is a post, purple is a collection. Um, and we intentionally you know, cut, cut off content so that the client's not like, doesn't think it's an actual page. We've tried to do these in the browser too, uh, but a lot of times there's confusion and the client starts to think this is the actual product. Um, we like the idea of it, it rendering the browser, but, uh, but these allow for like very quick iterations. And so typically we only show like one of these. Um, for this one, I think we, uh, we did this one and kind of just iterated on it and showed it to Chris um, via Hangout or screen share kind of thing, um, which he loved, and he loved it. And so this is, you know, the first, this was kind of the approved look, so we started heading down this way. Um, and then Chris, so after that, Chris created a page. Um, you can actually get to this page. It's uh, codepen.io slash guide where it's kind of like a pattern library or a style guide, maybe combined. You can start to see all the patterns. Uh, this is showing all the new design here, but um, we could start to see, start to pull out patterns and start to see how the new design was starting to trickle in uh, as he developed. So that was kind of cool. Um, so we started moving on to some, some page comps. These were done in Photoshop. Again, you can see the recent pens and your stuff there on the sidebar. This is the home page. Um, I'll kind of run through these quickly. They're just kind of an evolution of, of different things. We started to pump up the typography a little bit. Uh, this was a logged out state for the home page. So we had the idea of like grabbing pens that are animating in the background, like pens that actually exist. I uh, thought that would be fun and then giving a credit down here, um, which I think is, is implemented now. Um, we really liked this typeface. We felt like it was like gave the site a little bit of personality and 
hierarchy and con and um, you know was able to easily like access where your you know that headline is. Um, Chris didn't love it. Actually, he kind of hated it. Um, and Chris is like super laid back. You know, he's like, I don't know if I like that. Um, so we kind of knew he hated it when he said that. Um, so you know, you can see we're we're messing around with some settings and some menus here, trying to re redesign those. Um, really kind of just playing with the home page. And then we moved on to the post page, thinking that, you know, if we, if we designed this page, redesigned this page, this would give us a lot of the type styles that we needed. Um, and that was the previous page. This is um, the redesigned page. You can see a few, like, this is a listing for the, for the blog. Um, just kind of some different iterations there. This is where we started playing with typography. Uh, kind of toning it back a little bit on the type for the headline there. Um, tried a bunch of them. Uh, this was one we arrived at. It's called Telephone, um, which we like. Everybody likes, so we found a happy middle place. Um, so then summer hit. Um, Chris did a lot of development with his team. Um, in September, he came down and, and started, we scheduled a week to just pair together. Um, and so when I say pairing, I mean he, uh, we do a lot of, of designer and developer pairing at, at um, Sparkbox. And so that, what I mean is just kind of sitting together for a chunk of time, making sure things are looking good, tweaking things in the code. Um, so we did a lot of that this week. We just kind of like this cleared our schedules and did that in our conference room, set up a warm room in there. And so there's Katie and Chris pairing together. They spent like five days doing this. Um, and then, you know, sometimes you get to a point where like, okay, we need a design asset for that because we're gonna do this a little bit differently. So Katie would go and start designing some things. I think she's like working on iconography here. I sat in and, and started working on some more um, uh, like larger things like form styles and some different types of buttons. And even the editor, I think I was working on the editor too. So less pairing things, more like needed design assets that we were gonna try to tackle for the week. Um, we use GitHub for tracking all these issues, outstanding issues, um, and things that we wanted to do. Uh, for this, it was kind of easy just to like put some you know, printouts up on our wall and start making notes. Um, and that, that was super helpful in just making big lists of stuff. Um, we did some device testing this week, uh, testing on tablets and phones and all the different kinds of things. Um, I think we redesigned, totally redesigned the editor uh, this week. I don't know that we really planned to do it, but we said, we got some, some extra time. We're just gonna totally like blow it up. And so here's these little settings I was talking about in the lower corner. I think they were view settings. We talked about moving them up. So there was like a lot of UX uh, brainstorming and things and sketching that went in there. Um, that's the previous editor, what that looked like. That's the new editor. It's kind of a dark pen there, but uh, you can see we um, we clustered a lot of the settings and controls up here. We actually, you know, brought in the title of the pen before you didn't have the title or who it was by. Um, so that was a fun problem to to work on. Again, like I mentioned, some form design. Uh, we we did some brainstorming on the profile page uh, with this, you know, choosing a pen for your background. You can still also edit all the CSS and everything on your profile page, which is kind of fun. We didn't touch a lot of, a lot of the stuff down here. That, that's still kind of on the list. And then CodePen basically picked a bunch of people to, to use their tests with. I kind of wish we were a little more involved with that, but they gathered some data, passed it on to us. We made tweaks. Um, they also like, you know, knew that they were gonna get a lot of feedback from their users once they launched it too. So they were totally cool with like, oh, you know, our users are gonna let us know about it. So, which was totally different. So we launched in October of 2015, was the first phase. And I remember sitting in a workshop and like, it was launch day and, and being real nervous about like, what are people gonna think of this thing? You know, like, it's kind of a, it's kind of a different sort of layout, uh, but it was overwhelmingly positive and awesome and uh, hard work paid off for that. Um, switching gears a little bit from design, this is um, the, f the timeline of the project. So from February to October, uh, we did a big research phase here. There was content work. That overlapped design a little bit. 
And then you can see like they, you know, the CodePen team started developing well you know, about halfway into when we were designing. So they, they were cranking along. Um, and then um, you know, we did a bunch of design at the end as well. Quick breakdown of hours here. Um, it was a little hard to, to break these out uh, because of the fact that we were maintaining this site that's documenting our process and everything. Uh, we were doing some new things that we've never done before from a design perspective. And then we were working on the project as well. So it was around 200 hours. This is kind of, you know, design was about half. Research was about a third. Um, and then content, uh, about like 20%. Some quick takeaways here from the project. Um, research and kickoff meeting were, were highly valuable. We do them all the time now. Um, you know, you gotta have a budget for that stuff and sometimes it can be hard to convince a client of that, but um, do what you can to, to convince a client uh, that it's very valu valuable. Um, you know, again, allow room and schedule in your budget to learn about the product and implement a plan and process all of that data that you bring in. Um, Tackle pages that contain the most um, used modules first. So from a design perspective, that was the home page for us. A lot of times it's not the home page. So um, a lot of times we'll start to try and tackle like a listing page that has a lot of different modules and gives the client a good uh, idea of how the design is gonna look throughout the, the rest of the site. A lot of times a home page can have very unique, unique items. So that's something that we try to do. And then one thing that was really cool is Chris uh, set up a server, kind of a sandbox for us to play around with the real content on the CodePen site and log in and everything, but we could see the real content. So, you know, we, when we were in Photoshop, we're repeating that same pen, you know, thumbnail, but it was just cool to see, like, see the, everything moving, see, like, actual content in there. It makes a huge difference. Um, one tool that we really came out liking, did anybody use Denhub at all? Nice. Um, this was, uh, I know the CodePen team uses it now too. This is a, a ZenHub board of our site. It basically integrates with GitHub. So these are all GitHub issues, but it puts them in kind of like a Trello board format where you can create columns, custom columns. And what we really like about it is you can prioritize um, issues. So that's really cool. Check that out if you get a chance. Some pain points. Um, some things that were difficult, one was fighting with legacy code. So we kind of thought, we weren't sure and didn't really have the discussion about whether uh, Chris was gonna totally like recode, recreate the, the templates. And so, um, which he did not do. And we, you know, we ended up fighting a lot with like some of the layout, some of the max widths and some of the, the ways things respond on smaller screens. Um, so that was, we spent a lot of time on that and probably a conversation we should have had a little bit better up front. The mobile experience, you know, we, we definitely took more of an approach from uh, on, on the desktop side of things, um, just from some of the stats and analytics and, and seeing that people mostly use it on, on desktop, but that was really different for us. So we still kind of feel like there's some, you can still use it on, on mobile devices, but um, there's some definite UX things that, that still need worked on. Uh, felt like three projects in one, as I mentioned, we had our site, that we were putting together to document. We had uh, another project where we're like trying to figure out what new things to do, what made sense, and then the actual project itself. That was kind of a self-induced one. And then uh, not being able to get into the front end code was a real, like very different for us. It was kind of a challenge. And uh, we pr should have probably paired a little bit more with Chris, um, but that was a big, kind of a big deal uh, that made things a little bit more difficult that we should have probably identified up front. And those, all, you know, those challenges are common on, on any project. You, know, you have those types of things come up and you have to figure out your way around them. Okay, so that's kind of like in a nutshell what we did. There's tons left to do. There's lots of cool stuff coming up. There's new features. We're working on pro pages and a lot of settings and things still. Um, and so now it is time for the super top secret feature demo. Everybody ready for this? This is awesome. Okay, so you're sworn to secrecy. Chris said, make them swear to secrecy. Only a few people have seen this. Uh, this is about seven minutes long, but it's worth, it's worth every minute. Uh, so this is Chris Scoyer doing a demo here. Pretty crazy, right? Um, so this is like, I think a couple months out. Um, 
Yeah. So we're working, working on some of the iconography and, and some of the interactions and stuff with this. So super excited about it. Um, huh? Uh, a couple months, I think. That's what I'm told. Now, nobody spill, spill the beans to get me in trouble here. So um, thanks, guys. I appreciate you guys listening. Um, I think we have time for some questions, right? Cool. Awesome. All right. I'm go oh, look at me. My voice is now amplified. Uh, yeah. So yeah, give it a, one more round of applause, Mr. Jeremy. Thank you so much. Um, real quick thing. Uh, after this, if you want to continue talking to each other, uh, Totally grab more food, drinks, but also we'll probably head down to uh, Three-Legged Mare to continue the party. Uh, so join us there. Also, if it's your first time and I haven't met you, Kevin hasn't met you, Adam hasn't met you, please make an effort. Come up to us. We will not bite you unless you want us to bite you. Uh, <laughs> ooh, yeah, that's got, that got really weird real fast. Um, but cool. So if you have a question, uh, raise your hand. I'm going to give you the microphone, and then that way we record it. For the video. So if you're talking, you don't have a microphone in your hand, please raise your hand so I can give you it. Cool? So anyone, the floor is yours. Ah, oh, so far away. You're a second. Sorry. <laughs> Would, mm, sorry. Were there any interesting uh, dead ends that the design went down for a while that you thought showed promise but didn't make it? Yeah, so we had um, <clears throat> a couple of them. Um, if you notice in the, in the uh, element collage, we had like kind of the, the frame around the pens was white. Once we got real content in there, a lot of the pens were like, had white backgrounds and things and kind of blended into that. So we ended up having to make some adjustments there. Um, we did have uh, in the prototype, which I didn't show this, but like we had a little activity feed icon in the upper right. And uh, the thought was like, you would get a kind of a slide in tray of like all the activity feed or even like on, on larger screens, if you have a large enough screen that would automatically kind of pop in and display. Um, so those are, you know, there was a lot of those types of things that were like cool ideas that maybe either couldn't be implemented or um, just kind of like are on the list to do. There's tons of stuff like that. Um, but I mean, you know, from a design perspective, we talked a lot with them about like preserving their brand and like the dark background from a design perspective. And so like the, the design, like I said, was, was less of a like a start from scratch kind of thing, whereas the UX was kind of like, that was a little bit more start from scratch almost. Um, but yeah, good question. I think we had one up here. Okay, so um, I actually had two questions, if that's all right. Go for uh, it. First of all, kind of related to the same idea, um, did you have any instances where there was kind of issues about stepping on each other's toes because your client was so involved with development and design? So in your design process, did you have any issues where he kind of wanted to step in and take over uh, kind of like design ideas and not really follow what you had laid out? Yeah, yeah, there were, there were a few instances like that. Um, you know, we would, we would give him um, some comps and talk through them, and then he would come back to us and say, here's what I got, I made some decisions here, and we'd be like, well, I don't know. Um, and we, I mean, it, he's so laid back, he was totally open to anything, um, but there, there were definitely some of those. Some of the most, I guess, frustrating situations were where, like, we had shown something, he really loved it, but for some reason he couldn't do it or there wasn't time to do it that specific way. So we had to like kind of tweak it and make adjustments. Um, you know, a lot of it was like, like for one, one instance, like we wanted to display more pens on the page, but because uh, they're iframes, he, you know, he wants to see them moving. And so that's a big performance hit. Um, so we had some, we had a toggle where you could shut that off and you could just view like a thumbnail image so you could load more in. Um, which he liked, but I don't think he really thought that was a big priority. Um, so there were things like that. We, we were like, this is really cool um, that we felt like could have been really awesome, but you know, he's the client, so. 
and he's implementing it. So, what's your next one? Yeah. Oh, and my other one, um, and feel free to you know omit it if you're not allowed to say. But in, regarding the new feature, yeah, uh, is that going to be an open feature or a premium feature? If you yeah, know. that's a good question. Um, I don't actually. I think there is parts of it that. Uh, parts of it will be an open feature, so I don't think you have to have a pro account to, to be able to use it. I think there are parts of it, like maybe a deploy or something, that, that is probably a pro feature. I think they're still figuring that out. But I don't think they, they really don't like to, to shut that t big of a piece of functionality out totally. Um, and th that's really cool. That's like, it's like awesome of them, because they, there are several places where they could do that, you know, and, and, and choose not to. Anybody else? A couple in the back there. You know, you mentioned that it was very unique, the fact that CodePen controlled the front end code, and you mostly just, you worked with the design. How, basically, let's say, if there was a technical limitation, was it a lot harder to convince them to do something based on a technical limitation? compared to other clients that you worked with? Yeah, like, uh, meaning like we thought you could do something and he said, no, you couldn't do it, can't do that or something like that. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of that. There were times when we were like, <laughs> I need to make a code pen of this so I can show him we can actually do this, you know, like do something really weird like that. Um, but uh, there was only a couple of times like that. Um, most of the time it had to do with like, how the template was built previously, and we there wasn't time to rebuild it. Um, so there's like, like right now, if you go to one of the pro, like a pro page, like if you click on the little pro badge, you'll go to a page that um, the content doesn't go full width. We wanted it to go full width, but um, you know, just the way the template was built, it would have been taken a ton of work to do that. Um, so we'd still like push him on it a little bit, like we need to like do this. So it would look, and we did we did a bunch of stuff in the inspector, and like. Showed him how we, you know, which is easy to like edit, right? But um, like it should look like this. And um, so, yeah, there was definitely some of that. So. Uh, hey, Jeremy, no, uh, great talk, man. Thank, uh, thanks for sharing all this information. My question yeah. for you is um, can you expand a little bit more on the uh, color palette that you chose and how you created it? Did you use any? Yeah. Particular methodologies like triads or complementary strategy. How do yeah. you create that? <clears throat> yeah. Um, the I think it was the design. There's a page on on CodePen now and and previously uh, that Katie had actually worked on called Design Patterns and it had a bunch of different icons and like kind of animating SVGs on hover states and it used this like crazy color palette, real bright color palette. Um, so we wanted to stick with the brighter color palette. Um, and um, so we kind of pulled some, some colors from that. So that's kind of where they're derived from. There, you know, there was, the colors were kind of all over the place and there was no real methodology of how they were being used. Like sometimes there would be blue and sometimes there would be you know, another color for somebody's name. So it was like, there was a lot of stuff and you know, things just kind of got added on as functionality was added and there wasn't a lot of thought put into that. Um, so that's kind of where it came from. We decided, we, like, we eliminated a lot of colors in that style guide. There was tons of them. Um, so we said we need to pare these down and make sure they work together well. And then had the idea to like assign a color to an actual piece of content. So now we're trying to figure out like what color do, do projects get, you know? So um, yeah. One more. We got time for one more, right? Related. Uh, yeah. Do you ever think, or uh, how do you think about accessibility with that? Like, do you ever have like, oh, can't do red green here because color blindness or like contrast or that, how much of that plays into your choices? Yeah, yeah. Um, we had run through a couple um, generator or whatever you call those things where you, you put in the colors and it kind of spits out some results. We did some of that when looking at colors. Um, I know the CodePen team did a little bit of that. There was a discussion about that. Um, honestly, there, you know, like we didn't spend a ton of time delving into that whole lot, but we knew that we wanted to like make sure the colors we picked definitely had enough contrast with that black background. That was kind of the main thing that we were trying to trying to use. You know, if you don't know the colors that are associated with the types of content, it's not it's not going to you know affect the way you use it a whole lot. 
It's just kind of something that, that could be helpful. These two guys in the back are with CodePen Meetup Dayton. If you guys ever want to get down there, it's Ricardo and Alan. Uh, and they got stuff too, so make sure you make friends with them. Thanks for coming, guys.